Now in this lesson we're talking about dramatic light and the first image here we're using is, is not dramatic light. Sometimes it's better to show what something isn't so you can better understand what it is. This is a, a, a painting by John Follinsby, early 20th century painter, American painter, painted with John Carlson, one of his students. But the light, the value changes, and the temperature color changes are very subtle. There's not a lot of jump between the dark values and the light here. They're very subtle. Even the tree here is, could be really dark, dark. He keeps it lighter. The light between the light and dark greens and the temperature is very subtle also. There's not a big jump in temperature. That sunlit is somewhat more yellower and the shadow more blue, but not. it doesn't push it anywhere. That's a very nice painting. A lot of subtleties is hard but it has its own beauty to it. Uh, this is a painting by Hanson Puthoff, California Impressionist, uh, early 20th century, and this is dramatic lighting. It's late afternoon. It looks late because of the, the real warm light, a little bit more of a reddish-orange glow. And the shadows, darker, lights, lighter, more temperature contrast shadows are really blue, really dark, cool colors in the foreground. Uh, and a lot of contrast between the light and the dark. <clears throat> That's real dramatic lighting. It creates more of a sudden interest that the uh, John Follinsby doesn't. Not to say this is not as good a painting, but the dramatic lighting here is just real strong, real powerful, and that's what we want to focus on today. Generally, those times of days, early in the morning, real late afternoon, you have real long shadows like these are here, and a real strong separation of warm light, uh, cool shadow, dark shadow, light shadow, and you can push the color a lot more. The lights can have a lot more color in it. Yellows, yellow, orange, orange. The shadows have a lot more blue, blue, violet, blue, green in them. And when you push the value and the temperature, it really gives a strong color statement. The other thing is, is the shadow pattern. As I'm uh, looking at this painting here, what he does, what makes it hold together better, is this solid mass of dark. All these darks kind of connect in a little way and they create a pattern. And when you have this type of light, this dramatic lighting, late afternoon, early morning, this is what you're looking for. This is what you're putting down first is this pattern of dark, which creates the pattern of light. And you're usually simplifying quite a bit getting rid of a lot of the small little darks and lights. Then the foreground dark gets a little darker, but it's the same way. There's a pattern here. And if I can find this dark and light pattern and ignore the detail for as long as possible, Now these shadows down here are a little lighter, but I want to see it this way first. If it was a photograph I was painting from or if I was outside, this is how I want to see it. A simple pattern of dark and light. Once I get that down, these shapes down, then I can change the color to whatever I want it to or, or mix the colors uh, that I need to suggest this type of strong light. But that initial pattern, you don't have to have the values correct. You just have to find the pattern. Then when you mix the colors, uh, you're mixing the colors according to the right value, the subtle value. But even then I want to keep it big and simple. I want one overall color and value in the foreground trees in the foreground and one overall color and value in the shadow in the background. Then I can add the lights. Again, the simpler I can keep it, the better. Then he comes back in and he adds a lot of color into the shadows. A lot of variation, a lot of lighter darks, darker lights. But he keeps them separate. He holds on to that pattern of dark and light. That's really important. This is another painting by Guy Rose, another California Impressionist. And a little more subtle in the pattern, but it's still there. The light's very strong. This is probably early morning. The light's not quite as orange as it is in the evening. But same thing here. You have that pattern. And the simpler you can keep it, 
the better. Leave the detail uh, till the end. I'm going to make all of these shadow patterns just the same value, even though the darks get a little lighter in the distance. But all this, he's got some variations in there. All this can be considered to start with shadow pattern. Simplifying that overall dark and light, ignoring detail for as long as I can. Um, a painting only gets tighter as you go along. So the tighter you start, the tighter it's going to get. And it can just get way too, too tight. And it gets kind of stiff and you lose the color. But the bigger and simpler you keep it, you can still be careful, but be simple. It just holds together better. And this dark pattern, if I can see it like this first, and they all somewhat connect, if not directly connect, your eye kind of makes that leap to some of these um, in here. So that's what I'm looking for, is that strong dark and light pattern and keeping it as simple as long as I can. And in this photograph, again, you can see that that shadow pattern in the mountains, sunlight's coming from the right and it's creating this definite shadow pattern. The light patterns are right in here and that little bit of the tree sticking up. You know, and the light in the mountains up there. But the shadows are definite. Um, really, the shadows are what make the form. And the simpler I can keep it, the better. I want to keep things as big and as simple as possible. In this case, this shadow comes all in here. Even though these are light in here, they're a light value, they're still in the shadow, even though there's something that's really light. So I want to keep them in the shadow. Now, later I'd come back and lighten them slightly, but they still have to stay in the shadow. But by doing this, and you're simplifying that overall pattern and you're holding to that throughout the whole painting. You don't want to lose it even as you start adding detail. You want to keep that pattern. Now obviously there's a lot of different lights with, or different lighter shadows within the shadow, but this is the most important view of this image. So keep things very simple. Find that shadow pattern. And go from there. This is Catalina Mountains in uh, Tucson. This is California. So you have different lightings, different places, and this got a Midwest in here. The John Fallensby was a East Coast painting. But same thing here, even though it's kind of hard to, uh, to see, there's a definite pattern and this is early in the morning but even here where it's a little more difficult this is my pattern just because I know the lights coming from the front over to the left a little bit and I painted this one here painted it on site but that's that overall pattern you can see it more on this tree real definite creating that pattern in the background if I want to make the pattern longer again to create more drama more interest I can do that, but find that pattern, no matter what reference you're using, and then go from there. Same thing here, the sunlight's coming from the right. Shadows have definite patterns in here. They connect. If not connect directly, they almost connect. This line here is a little bit too much of a solid line. Instead of looking like a uh, shadow, it just looks like a line on top of the mountain. Things like that you stay away from. It looks like the mountain is butted right up against this mountain. And I want to create space between background mountain and middle ground mountain. To where it looks like there's two or three miles between them instead of, you know, a few inches. That cast shadow there makes it look like there's not much space between them. But all this in here, even though it's real light, is shadow. And I want to keep everything in the shadow darker than everything in the light. Even if it looks real light, like these, especially these rocks here. They look very light. But they can't be as light as anything in the light area. They have to stay in the shadow, even though they're quite a bit lighter than the other values in the shadow. Compositionally, I like that this hill is higher than this one. I don't want them both the same. If they're both the same height, then they 
create a, kind of a static look. So having this one lower, this has more stuff going on on this side, the cactus. So this one, I'll maybe raise that cottonwood up a little bit, add another cactus or two, just to balance it off a tiny bit. I don't want equal balance on either side. I just want a little bit on one side to balance off the bigger portion on the on the other side. This low evening light has more of an orange glow to it. Uh, photograph doesn't always pick it up, but you can see it on the green, the yellow green of the cactus. There's a lot of orange in it. A lot of orange in here. There's also a lot of violet, even though it's real warm. I'm going to mute it down with violet, but it'll still be very warm compared to the shadow. So everything is comparison. The light is real light value compared to the shadow. These lights here are real light compared to the shadow, but they're darker compared to these lights. So everything's a comparison. Always compare one thing with another. If I mix this value in here without comparing it to something else, I, I'll, I'll never get the right value. So when I want to mix this, I don't stare directly there. I look over here or I look at the sky or look at the shadow, and sometimes all three, and I get the difference between them. So this, these bushes are so much darker than the sky, uh, so much lighter than the shadow. So you always have to compare it with something else. Never look at one thing and try and match the value. You have to compare it with something else.